Hey, what's up, Zach here, and these are my five favorite shoes that were released this year. Here we go. And heads up, this list does differ from my overall top five shoes in the space right now, as these just comprise new release shoes this year. And coming in at number five, this is a shoe I kind of undersold during my review of it. However, once I had a chance to put it on my feet more and playing it more, I really did start to notice the benefits of this shoe. So coming in at number five is the K-Swiss Ultrashot 3. Now the Ultrashot 3s have a couple really key benefits to them over some other shoes in the space this year. Number one, it is a more maximalist shoe. However, it is a pretty much immediate break-in shoe. The uppers are very secure and the midsole foam is about as plush and comfortable as a midsole gets. Now the reason it isn't higher on this list is it is a little bit bulky, so it is gonna heat up outdoors, especially in darker colors. And that midsole foam doesn't have a lot of density. So although it does mold really quick, almost like a moldable or orthotic under your foot, it's also going to bottom out a little bit faster faster than some other Maximalist shoes, say like the Adidas Soul Court Boost. So you are getting a lot from this shoe. However, when it starts to wear down, you're really gonna know it. And coming in at number four, this is a shoe that has really divided the community, especially in the comments section. It really is a love or hate shoe, and that is the Nike Vapor Pro. Now, a lot of people do not like that the Vapor Pro ditched the integrated shoelace eyelets of the Vapor 10, and the uppers aren't as plush. In my opinion, this shoe plays a lot better than the Vapor 10, just because the uppers are a little bit lighter and breezier and more durable, especially here in the toe drag area. Yeah, they're not as plush as the Vapor 10s were, but I think in terms of a pure performance shoe, uh, these were some of the better ones I played in this year. Now coming in at number three, I also think these shoes were the most improved from their previous model, and that is the Babolat Jet Mach 3. And I think the biggest improvements to the Jet Mach 3, number one, the midsole foam, just as comfortable as a brand new pair of Jet Mach 2s, but a lot more durable and gives you just a little bit more spring back, a little bit more elastic in the midsole, which I really liked for speed. Number two, they kind of ditched that Kevlar upper for a little bit more of a comfortable mesh upper. And so that does give you a lot easier of a break in and the shoe just feels a little more plush underfoot, even though it does still retain all of that durability of the Kevlar previous in the back. Babolat Jet Mach 2. I think the most important though was getting a lot of durability guard on the medial side or inside of the shoe while keeping it really ergonomic and allowing the shoe to bend really well. So you're getting all that durability, but in a shoe that is just streamlined and just wicked quick. And speaking of quickness, the number two shoe on this list, I really feel was the best shoe to combine speed as well as durability and comfort underfoot. And that is the ASIC Solution Speed FF2. Now the Solution Speed FF2 to me combines Combines the best aspects of the Nike Vapor Pro and the Babolat Jet Mach 3 with a really rugged, durable urethane upper, kind of similar to the A6 Cord FF2, just in a much lighter and easier to move around package. They're really streamlined and fast. They really move quicker around the court. And that A6 Flight Foam is some of the most responsive foam out on the market right now. And honestly, between the Solution Speed FF2 and the Babolat Jet Mach 3, not a lot between these shoes. I think the Solution Speeds maybe just have a little bit more of a forgiving fit, a little bit more durable, and I think the midsole foam is just a little bit better. However, you know, both these shoes I really don't think you can go wrong with if you're looking for a speed-focused shoe. And before I get to the best new shoe of the year, I do want to make one honorable mention, and that is the New Balance Fresh Foam Lab V2. Now, if you're somebody with a high arch or a neutral or medium arch, these shoes are going to function great. Great. I do think these are, if not the most stable shoe, one of the most stable shoes in the market right now. However, if you're somebody with painful flat foot, painful over pronation, these shoes just don't have enough of a stiff shank to hold that arch up like some of the other shoes we've seen this year. And so they are going to bend a little bit inside. They are going to over pronate a little bit. So if you are one of those players, this shoe really isn't for you. So that's why they can't crack into the top five. However, for the right player, these shoes are just an absolute beast on the court. And coming in at number one, I'm sure if you're part of the normal tennis crew here, you probably guessed it, and that is the Diodora Blue Shield 5s. And I could really wax poetic about every single part of the shoe, but I would just say overall, the Blue Shield 5s are one of the more simple shoes out there. They combine the best elements of just about everything else in the market right now. They put it into a very simple package that allows number one, speed, number two, stability, number three, durability. So just about any player can find something they like in the Blue Shield 5s. They're also one of the most comfortable shoes out 
out there right now, just because that Blue Shield in the forefoot is just so darn comfortable. So I, I really hope in the Blue Shield 6, they don't screw this up because I really think the formula in the Blue Shield 5s right now it is probably the best in tennis. And like I said, this video encompasses my favorite new shoes this year. If you wanna see my favorite shoes overall, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect to rubber and foam. I'll see you in the next video.